Welcome to worship this morning. And we're going to start this morning with, because um, today's service is focused on uh, the healing of a man born blind. And I came across this video, I had another one chosen. I came across this video which I thought was very apt because it is a duet between Dr. Yunapingu, who's passed away now, and uh, so if, if you're Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, please be aware you're about to see somebody who's deceased, um, and um, Paul Kelly, and they're singing Amazing Grace in their own languages. It's a good way to start the service for this morning session. So we'll go on to the next slide. Great to see the images of um, kids playing because um, and to also think that a lot of our um, very remote communities have been isolated now to try and prevent them being um, if infected by the coronavirus before we're ready to work out how to best assist them. Now the land that we work that we're meeting on today wherever we are it's God's land and God's spirit dwells here and we acknowledge the Wadawurrung people here in Geelong traditional custodians of this land under God. Together with our First Nations sisters and brothers, we face times of turmoil as a virus sweeps this world as another did a hundred or so years ago. May we draw together in our humanity and kinship as children of God in this great Southland. Let's pray. And the words in yellow on the screen are for you. Nothing is visible unless it is exposed to light. Once we were in the darkness, but now we are in the light of Christ. Walk, therefore, as children of the light, and take no part in the works of darkness. Even though we walk in the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for the Lord is with us. Let us come into a time of prayer of confession. God of glory and God of grace, bring us to our senses. If that means shining your light fiercely until our inner eyes hurt and our ugly ways, personal and communal, stand exposed, then so be it. We do face an uneasy way ahead, but the hard way of truth and healing. Slowly but surely we come to you. In your arms may we find the grace to let go, to accept your forgiveness and receive restoration. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Brothers and sisters, my friends, there are no half measures in God, all or nothing. While we were still unrepentant sinners, Christ died for us. In the name of Jesus, step free of the shadowy past and turn to the bright future with keen eyes and optimistic hearts. You are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Now, amen. One of the things before we... Um, there you go. I've not taken that one out. Next one, thanks. So this would be normally where... I thought I'd show you this. Uh, it's one of those challenges. This is something that a lot of people value. How do you pass the peace? And uh, this was a discussion being held online a week ago. How could we do this without touching? This was before we were closing services. And the conversation is you can't shake hands and you can't embrace, etc. So what movement could you do? And they connected a theologian with somebody who was into movement therapy and movement dance. And they came up with this approach. So my peace to you. And then you respond in reverse which I then take. All right. So you might think when you meet somebody who you know in the street and you know you can't shake their hand and so forth, but you know them, you might say, peace to you. And then they can reciprocate. So there you go. My peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. All right, so now we're going to move on to the next. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm going to play. Um, you can stand, you can sit, and we'll go through the, this one. If you didn't know, um, apart from the Gospel reading, which is the man born blind and Jesus meeting him, um, it's the Good Shepherd's Psalm, Psalm 23 this morning.
And the good news now is because I knew I was being recorded, I made all the usual mistakes I usually do, but you'll be able to listen to them in stereo. Self-consciousness. So this morning, instead of the gospel reading, we're going to have a meditation time. And we're going to take you through John's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. The actual reading is 1 to 41. And that is the reading which goes on to talk about the interaction with the Pharisees, who are quite taken aback about Jesus healing somebody on the Sunday, or Sabbath, sorry. But we're going to focus on the interaction of this man who'd been blind since birth with the Saviour on that fateful day. So I invite you, if you're with somebody um, at home and you want to sit and face each other, you can do that. But otherwise, just close your eyes and I want you to imagine yourself as the one born blind, sitting in the corner of a, an area. The day is hot and dusty. You are sitting in a familiar place in the market. The smell of overripe food and sweaty animals is not new to you, nor are the flies that swarm about your face. The air is filled with voices local merchants soliciting passing customers, the gossip of elderly folk, the laughter of children. You sit alone in silence with a hand outstretched, begging for small change from faceless figures in the crowd. You have been blind since birth and cannot imagine the kaleidoscope of colour which surrounds you. The world of sounds and smells is familiar to you, yet lacking something you can't quite name. Blindness has brought you solitude. Distance from the hustle and bustle of the marketplace, there is much time to think. What feelings surface as you reflect on your life as a blind beggar? What longings do you feel? What thoughts do you have as you contemplate your past and your future? You hear approaching voices engaged in earnest discussion. A few men and women, maybe six in number. As you stretch out your hand, more out of a habit than a hope, the voices stop in front of you. What's happening? Sometimes a coin is thrown in your direction. Sometimes a kick, but no one ever pauses for an instant. You cringe, expecting to be struck or spat upon. And a woman speaks. Teacher, whose sin caused this person to be born blind? Was it their own or their parents' sin? What strange words. How did they make you feel? Then a man replies. His rich voice sends a shiver down your spine. Although young, he speaks with father-like gentleness and authority. This person's blindness has nothing to do with their sins or their parents' sins. This person is blind so that God's power might be seen at work in them. I am the light that this person needs, that the world needs. What an astonishing statement. How do you react? Is it with wonder or fear now? God's power might work in me? What hopes does this raise for you? Impulsively you reach out your hand towards this voice and a warm hand grips yours. You are startled. No one has ever touched you like this. But the firm and friendly grip brings its own reassurance. You hear the man spit, although now you don't flinch. He releases his grip and places a hand under your chin. You feel his gentle fingers damp with water and mud caress your eyelids. A warmth flows through his hands, a strength, a mysterious power. As this person speaks to you, you remember the name you heard, Jesus. Go and wash your face in the pool, he says. What does he mean? What has he done? 
hands grab and propel you towards the nearby pool. You fall, shaking to your knees, and thrust your hands into the cool water. You splash the refreshing liquid on your face and peer through the caked mud. A flash! Something stabs your mind, dim and getting brighter. Movement, shapes, colour. Glistening water and a reflection in the pool of a stunned face. Must be your face. I can see, I can see a miracle. You turn around, overwhelmed by joy and gratitude. Now share your feelings with Jesus. Now imagine yourself going home to the family who cast you out to beg. What is their reaction? And what happens next in your life? When you're ready, you can open your eyes. Now, if you continue in the reading in John, you'll discover that there's a lot of interaction backwards and forwards, both the family and the authorities. But I just wanted to offer you a, a brief reflection. And um, my focus today is on um, healing, not judgment. I think the, um, I've done a bit on this story because it's got disability overtones. And at the moment we see ourselves in a time of great turmoil. So I thought, well, actually this story has, as you might have experienced during that um, meditation, a degree of uncertainty and turmoil inside. And some people would say that God's knee uh, has this story in there because God needs um, calamity and people's crises to show how wonderful God is. But that's not true at all. God doesn't need people's suffering to show that he's great or that he's all-powerful. That's just a human behaviour. Nor does God need this story as a teaching example that sometimes some of us have experienced in the hospitals when the ward rounds come round. In fact, whenever Jesus encounters suffering, he stops, he honours the person before him, and things change for the better. Now, gospel writers use a lot of metaphors. So it is probable that this miracle actually happened, because three of them do report it. But the lesson is more than just that Jesus could heal blindness. So I, I will unpack two, I think, lessons. First lesson, a person with a disability, sickness, including infections like coronavirus, or suffers a trauma, is not being punished for their sin in most cases. Bad things do happen to good people. And conversely, just because you avoid illness, family trauma or some other challenge does not mean that you are living a blameless life. And that leads to the second lesson. Blindness here is also a message about spiritual blindness. Those who were on the same streets as Jesus but didn't see or recognise Jesus as Son of God, the one who is bringing the gift of spiritual light. And that's why this story goes on to talk to the Pharisees because there are a lot of images, if you read on, where they behave as if they are blind. They don't see. And that's the contrast with this man born blind who says, and I'll talk about that in a moment, I don't know what's going on, but I tell you what I can tell you. For most of us, this last week or two has felt like a roller coaster, just like you've, or just shortly after you've eaten fairy floss. You'd rather get off right now, please. Yet Jesus comes to us, values us, and can heal our vision if we let him. And like our meditation earlier, we'll discover so much more of God's love and world than some things we settled for when we were blind only a few weeks ago. 
Perhaps as we have to spend time away from the bustle and drive that has been our modern society, we'll discover the still small voice that the prophet Elijah heard. And you can find that in 1 Kings chapter 19. So let's not be like the Pharisees in this extended story, desperately trying to hold on to old, human-formed rules and ways, rather than embrace the opportunity that is right in front of them, changing their world. Instead, let's speak, simply speak of what we know and then discover, as the man born blind did, and I quote, I know nothing about that one way or the other, but I know this thing for sure. I was blind, I now see. That's verse 25. May we see God's light at work in our lives and community in the coming days, weeks and months of these dark times. Amen. Um, Claire, do you want to share the journey? Have you got anything? Or? Okay. So Claire has got no notices. I've got a couple. Um, on the screen there, there's resources being prepared rapidly. Can we go back? Sorry, Noel. Yep, back one. Um, lots of being resources being prepared, not just how to do a Bible study, but things like this, which is how to do worship in your own home, um, resources that will contain videos. So <coughs> cmla.org.au, have a look there. People are creating things, little videos, that can be really useful if you just want a quiet space in the morning. And we will also be looking at ways we can create a prayer time, um, perhaps a little theme, that every day all of us can join in prayer and know that we are connected. And then the second one, um, just letting you all know, we've decided to open the church for prayer um, and that'll be on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays from 9.30 to 11. Um, it will be open like it is now. The candle will be lit. Whoops, I haven't done. Oops. So the candle will be lit. It's going to choose not to be lit. So the candle will be lit. The times of prayer. And people are welcome to come and pray. We would ask though that if you're not feeling well, that's not a good time to be coming. Let us know and somebody will come to, or, or join with you in prayer. We'd rather keep this place a little bit of a, a sanctuary. Um, it won't be formal and um, you're welcome if you want to come. Um, the website and the Facebook page are where we're trying to keep people abreast of what's happening and um, resources and uh, ideas we have, as well as the um, pastoral network. So for those who are not on the internet, we're trying to use phone and drop around um, paperwork and so forth. All right. Anything else? If you didn't know, most of the groups using the premises are now um, in suspension. Okay, let's go on to prayers for the people. Let's pray. Loving and compassionate God, you call us to love our neighbours and to be bearers of your hope and grace in our world. Expand our hearts and vision to respond with compassion to those around us who are struggling in this time of uncertainty, anxiety, grief and suffering. Give wisdom and strength to our health workers and government officials as they provide leadership in bringing our country through this crisis. We bring before you and into our hearts and minds those who work and whose income is uncertain, those who are in isolation, those who are fearful of an unknown future, those who live in situations of domestic violence and whose isolation increases the control of violent partners, those who are homeless and all those who offer them support and care, those who are involved in aged care, our agency leaders, staff and residents, their loved ones, businesses whose futures are very uncertain, their leaders and staff, school staff and students, 
those with health conditions that put them at greater risk. Give wisdom and care-filled discernment to all our church leaders, councils, local congregations, as we seek to creatively live out our worship, witness and service in ways that offer Christ's life-giving love and peace. Strengthen and sustain us to be your people, shaped by your abundant grace, bearers of your generosity and overflowing hope, through Christ, our light, hope and love. And through the name and in the name of the one who taught us to pray when we pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Um, for those here, the offering is um, outside, so you can leave it there as you depart, um, or you can use the online methods. Um, so that's where we're going to draw it to a close, and I'm going to send you out. Um, and we will finish with um, a song. So I've picked resources today from Craig Mitchell, which was the meditation, and I'll have the link of that on the website. And the prayer was from our president, Deidre Palmer. So as we go out, we're going to have a song that is written by David McGregor a couple of years ago, which is also on the web if you want to watch it later. Um, you may be able to join in when the chorus comes. The words will be on the screen. So let us stand and um, we'll draw to a close. May God, our creator, renew in us the creative spirit that brings healing and life to all creation. May Jesus the Christ sustain us in boundless grace and love. And may the Holy Spirit fill us with courage to be bearers of God's hope in the world. Amen. Let us sing.